Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're going to be reacting on a video called Worst Fitness Trends from Will Tennyson. So I already got a couple ideas in mind. One, I haven't watched the video obviously, but one is probably women recording and trying to act like, you know, people are looking at them and making it a huge deal. Another one is probably stringer tank tops like that are just so thin that like, you can see someone's nipple basically. Uh, probably a different one would be um, people not putting their weights away, stuff like that. I don't know. Let's see what happens. Let's react to this. And again, like uh, every video I make, it's basically going to be at the bottom of every video uh, in the description, the link to the actual video I'm reacting to. All right, let's, uh, let's get into it. The fitness industry bubble is a very weird bubble. While the golden era wasn't perfect, it was a simpler time. These days, it's not even about the workout, but how you look during the workout. This is like the gym equivalent of being circumcised. Whoa, that's on my hand. Oh, he has something to prove with that one. Oh. I am so nervous right now. Oh. Today, we're going over the worst fitness trends. Breakfast today, I'm going to Denny's, and I've never been to Denny's in my life, and I'm not sure if this is a milestone to be celebrating. The first trend that we're going to talk about today is not So you guys know this guy is uh, hilarious. I've seen some of his videos already. So let's see what he says here. Trend number one. Food of eating. So it's a lot like friends with benefits because on paper, the concept is great, but poor execution usually leads to things blowing up in your face or in this case, your waistline blowing up. So people who say they're intuitive eating, they're usually- I completely agree with that. Intuitive eating is such a dumb thing to do. You're basically just eating based on your emotions or when you feel hungry. You'd be surprised. Like the, most people, they feel hungry and then guess what they had? All they have to do is drink some water and then it goes away. So it doesn't mean that they're actually hungry. They're just thirsty. It could be so many different things. Intuitive eating is a very horrible way to, to reach fitness goals. And this is coming from a trainer. I trained well over 750 people at the time of this video. And primarily, you know, they're adults for the most part, like 90% of them. That doesn't work. You can't tell someone intuitively eat. They've been intuitively eating their whole life, which is why they're overweight. Most people that do that. Just frustrated with tracking macros and they have no diet identity. It's just something that they are doing in the meantime. And a lot of people can't really distinguish need versus want. Because what if you want to need something? Sorry about that, guys. It's like lagging. So let's go back. Identity is just something that they're doing in the meantime. And a lot of people can't really distinguish need versus want. Because what if you want to need something? Definitely not the best looking twins I've woken up to, but I've always said taste first and then question later. So I got the hollandaise sauce on the side. So I'm in full control of what I'm putting into my body. So right now my hunger, my hunger cues are around the six out of 10. Oh, the poor is updating the cues. The poor is updating the cues. It's about a seven out of 10 now. We're going all in. We're gonna go all in here. All right, so classic Benny taste test. I'm kind of triggered. And just so you guys know, he's actually one of the few fitness influencers who are actually natural. He has to be natural. He trains extremely hard. You could tell that he gets like chubby while he bulks and then he loses weight. He loses fat primarily. So let's uh, see what he says here. I'm not called the classic Denny, but off the bat, coffee is fire here. Uh, given my history with Denny's, I can't imagine this tasting bad. Nice and runny yolk. Hard to get right at a chain place. Okay. That sauce is decadent, man. These hash browns, I love a shredded hash brown. It inspires me to get shredded myself. Oily in a good way, not too oily. I need something with more breathability. Raising this up. Top. So just so you guys know, we're also going to be fast forwarding this. Uh, I don't want to react to the whole video. It's going to end up being like a 45 minute video. So we're going to just react to each point and then, you know, watch a little bit of the video as well. Yo, Will, you ready to go? Something doesn't feel quite right. I need something with more breathability. Business up top. 
party down low. Much better. Hey, Nick, Kofi. Let's see this. Oh, did you really? You actually. Pre-workout time. Now, you would think that everybody in the fitness industry has the same schedule as Elon Musk because we don't have the time to take our scooper, put it into the shaker, shake it up, and actually sip our pre-workout. We have to dry scoop it. So not only is that stupid, but it's a choking hazard. It's more of a choking hazard. I completely agree. It's like, I guess people don't want to dirty dishes, but it's the same shaker bottle. Just shake it, drink it, rinse it, and then when you get home, wash it. Throw in the dishwasher. Get two or three. That way you don't have to wash them by hand. Or um, or just have one on hand. Yeah, dumb, very dumb trend. It's like obviously something that people do because it looks cool and everybody else is doing it. But it makes no sense to me either. I've been trying to bench 315 without a warm up. So I have not done this before in my life uh, for obvious reasons. Here we go. Oh, a lot of people do this. Is this like a status symbol or something? I don't get it. My favorite part of the day is sipping pre-workout, going to the gym with music. It's making my eyes water right now. Look at my eyes water. I might go for two scoops because in the fitness industry, you gotta be caffeinated, you know what I mean? It's the gym bro equivalent to getting white girl wasted. I actually don't even take pre-workout ever. I haven't, I mean, I've taken it before, but I, I I never take it these days. Like I haven't pro I probably haven't taken it in six, seven years. I don't remember. You don't need pre-workout, guys. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. That's what you have to do. In the cowbell for the barbell. I don't get this one, but feeling like absolute trash from doing those dry scoops. But we're at the gym right now, and the next trend we're gonna talk about is wearing a flannel to the gym. Like, are you mistaking the cowbell? Yeah, that's another one. I find that it's usually guys who are like, you know, in like they're they're stronger usually, and you know they just want to I guess distinguish themselves differently, or they wear that uh, to try to something called a pump cover. So they basically just you know do their exercises and then eventually they take the shirt off and then everybody's like whoa, or at least that's what they think is gonna happen. Let's continue. For the barbell, I don't get this one, but I see it literally all the time. Like, it, it's just like crazy to me. Like, what's next? Wearing onesies to a funeral? Do you think they have a mechanical bowl here? I'm trying to find out what I'm gonna do for my workout today, because for many people, they do a workout to look like a celebrity or a certain superhero like Batman, Thor, or whatever, without considering the resources that these guys have access to, like Chris Hemsworth, like from the kitchen to the gym to the pharmacy, they have literally everything laid out for them. So it's not really a relatable thing to do, but still people do all these crazy things, like putting on 30 pounds of muscle in one month. I had an assistant whose only job was to bring me food. It was like a conveyor belt of smoothies and protein. A conveyor belt of smoothies and protein. But I feel like Guys, that's impossible. You cannot gain 30 pounds of muscle in a month. You're taking, you're definitely taking steroids. Absolutely no way. Like he's forgetting something, but who hasn't forgotten having a cocktail or two, even the anabolic kind. The first exercise we are gonna do today is what Alan Richardson did for Jack Reacher to blow up his arms like crazy. So we're gonna do a superset here, tricep push down, superset with rope hammer curls, four sets of 25 reps. And I don't know about you, but to me, 25 reps is gear in Spanish. Like that is just absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so these guys are doing workouts that are that you have to be on top of the steroid in order to finish. It's also dumb. It's so unnecessary. Really nonsense. I don't. I don't believe it for a second. Oh. Crocs know that they're a meme. You know what I mean? This is like the gym equivalent of being circumcised. Like, is this to show off my lower abs or my treasure trail? I'm not sure. And it's actually an instantly bannable offense. Offense. If you have an Audi numbers, very, very seriously, they take a school. If you're lucky enough to get access to a bench before the high school entourage shows up, of course we have to max out because people take.
their bench press numbers very, very seriously. They think a school. What was that? Let's see. I didn't even see it. Bench before the high school entourage shows up. Of course, we have to max out because people take. Always making out on always maxing out on bench. Okay, yeah. That is not a good idea, guys. I don't even remember the last time I maxed out. I only do five rep maxes these days, um, mainly because I don't want to get hurt. Having a little higher rep range is ideal, and that's what I recommend because you're not you're not really going to be training your cardiovascular system doing five reps. So that is technically gauging your strength because your cardiovascular component, regardless of how bad it is, it's not going to come into play when you're only doing five reps. And if it does, it's so little that it, it's still fine. Their bench press numbers very, very seriously. They think a school will take that over their GPA. So I'm gonna try to max out right now. No spotters, because I don't wanna live with any failures. The looks I'm hitting in the gym right now, kind of weird. I feel like the male crop top is only allowed if like you're I think he's gonna get 365, let's see. You're like sub 8% body fat, because I'm standing like this. Well, I got a little bit of, I got some stuff hanging over, especially when you sit down. So I feel like this is like, if you're shredded, but obviously you do you if you want to. I think I might need to get the protractor out for my back arc. I need to, like, I need to eliminate the, the range of motion as much as possible for the most amount of weight, right? Uh, I think that's how it works, but I'm not too sure. No way he's getting 365, but that's that's very impressive. Very few people could do that. Chest is done. It's getting hot in here, or is it just me? Oh my god. There has been this big focus on these actually do have some utility to them. Um, because they'll cover it'll absorb a lot of that sweat from when you're exercising. It also might cause you to sweat more. A headband will be less uh, fashionable, I guess, nowadays, but they're actually more practical to have a headband. Then you have the top of your head that can breathe, and when the sweat comes down your face, it'll catch it all right in the headband. So let's see what he says. Functional strength over actual strength. Like, who cares about strength situations in the outside world? Function Trend eight, functional strength. I don't know what he means by that. Let's see. Gym strength is the only thing that actually matters, in my opinion. Like, who cares if there's no hammer curl machines in the outside world? Because to me, the gym is the real world and the only world. This is a car I'm about to go off a cliff. I somewhat agree with that. It's like, guys, we're not work like uh, by and large, we're not working on farms and and all this stuff anymore. So the only real gauge we have to see who's strong and who's not is doing it in a controlled environment like a gym doing it out in the i guess the wild if people had to call it that uh it's just not realistic like no one by and large is doing that hypertrophy achieved zero now i don't know about you guys but would you rather look like you could save a kitten stuck underneath a boulder or actually be able to do it i'd rather look it uh, I don't know about that, but that's hilarious. The next trend is TikTok reels. Now these look like horror movie excerpts because they look like an exorcism. Like, are we supposed to be following these things or are they self-parodying PSAs? These TikTok reels are usually done in. Yeah, it's it's like it's all for show, guys. Like all these exercises that these people are doing on these TikTok reels, like this guy right here, looks like they're lifting like a bunch of wheelbarrows or something, or some kegs. It's just it's purely for looks. They did not achieve the body they have doing exercises like that. It's just not realistic. No one's doing that. The only way you're gonna get a body like that is by doing hypertrophy based exercises and making sure that you. That you should have a structured diet and that you're lean. That's how you look like that. And, and most of these guys are probably using steroids too. It, 
like it's so easily and readily available Every, everyone's in a not everyone but the majority of people that are famous on social media are going to be using some type of uh drugs or something Paris with somebody who's pretty much the same person as you because they are so synchronized. The difference between TikTok fitness and YouTube fitness is YouTube fitness teaches you how to break a plateau. This provides you a plateau. It's, it even reminds us to breathe. With fitness trackers, you have some people wearing multiple at a time looking like animals. I'm probably gonna be wondering why tomorrow I broke it on my forehead because I'm freaking drenched in sweat. But the next trend is the obsession with fitness trackers. You have some people wearing multiple at a time looking like animals. Yeah, guys, you only need one. And it's really the primary use, I believe, that for a fitness tracker is for you to know how much calories you're burning each day as well as how many steps you're taking. Other than that, they're not that helpful. Oh, and the timer, too, if you're going to use it. You can just get, like, an Apple Watch or some type of Samsung Watch or Fitbit. You know, it, it'll track your sleep, too, actually. So, no, that, that's actually very important. Your sleep is very important. So the four main reasons I think a tracker is useful is for sleep, for tracking the amount of calories that you're burning uh, throughout the day, to use for a tracker, and uh, to count your steps. Those are the main reasons, in my opinion. Anabolic wrappers, we might have different time zones, but we only have these things that they're just another extension of our phone, reinsuring that mind phone connection. For lunch today, we are at a place called Kale Me Crazy. They're making fun of me before I made the purchase, calling me crazy for spending $20 on this, which leads me to the next trend, overly priced salad and Power Bowl bars. Yeah. Uh... It's crazy. The fittest people I know don't go crazy with all this stuff. Like they're not going and getting these type of salads and all this overpriced uh, food that's labeled healthy or because kale right now is like, oh, my gosh, everybody should eat kale, kale chips and all this stuff. You don't need that. I've tried kale chips. They're not that good. Sweet potato chips are way more. taste way better. Like. $20 for this. It looks like leftover rabbit food. I went with the vegan option because veganism is the best. No, it's not. Thinks that their way is the right way and people start to shame other people for doing something different. I know it's very, very hard to believe, but people can have their own opinions and what works for you might not work for me. Everything has their ups and downs and their place. Just always bodybuilding over CrossFit. The ideal male physique these days is essentially a jacked naked mole rat because these guys are absolutely hairless. They have a jaws or size, get the perfect jawline. It's pretty much a beauty pageant. Yeah, I, I, I will I will say um, having excessive hairs, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that look, which is why, like, you know, I trim myself. I, I keep myself well-groomed, like, once a month or something like that. But I don't grow that much hair. But there's some people who have like an incredibly hairy back and hairy chest and stomach and legs. And, you know, they're, they're, you know, anyway, that's just my opinion. And instead of the women. Kofi, you might have to pin me down. I know you're good at that. Screaming like a girl. No. no. <laughs> oh. I know. You just blitzed me, Amanda. Holy. Oh, you have something to prove with that one. Ow. Oh! Oh! That was as. This is so weird. Oh my god. I've heard it's really good for your BO, and that's why a lot of guys do it. So, I mean, I've done it once. I'm not going down the rabbit hole. It's like a yeah, you could, guys, you could just trim that hair off with like, a, with like some clippers. It, it's You don't need to go like uh, skin bare like that. And I do believe that it's also better for your um, for body odor as well. Because, you know, the, the odor sticking to your hair is one thing, but it's sticking as close as possible to the skin, which is where the odor comes from, is uh, better. And also, I have a video, if you guys are interested in it. I'm, I've been making my own deodorant for the last, like, two years, basically. That actually works, and it's 100% natural.
it's just like i think four ingredients i make enough for like six months at a time it's so easy and cheap it comes out to significantly less than any deodorant you could buy it's probably i think i did the math like 30 cents or 25 cents each and they each last like a month month and a half easily a month and a half and i use it two times a day two three times a day and i mentioned it works it's not like those natural deodorants that suck you got one you have a sleeve i just maybe completely bare bald what or what else are you gonna wax you wish we are at target right now about to do a grocery haul or a anabolic grocery haul because everything has to be anabolic we don't really worry about how much more we can live it's how much more we can eat we trade vitamins and there's some truth to that you know it, it's about the quality of your life it's not all about just building muscle if that's the case you might as well start taking drugs if that's what's going to help you build more muscle it doesn't mean it's going to help you live longer and be healthier for most people um unless you're like really old and your testosterone is like almost non-existent you get on trt you're going to feel significantly better and you're going to live longer but a lot of people are just overdoing it nowadays minerals for chemicals and food diet a diet that i imagine an oopa loopa to eat the first thing is excessive fiber protein bars it's like you eat a sausage and you start shitting out a bunch of pepperonis you have <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend high fiber diets. I've tried them. Uh, when you poop, you're going to poop more often and it's going to be just straight, like almost like you don't even have to. This may sound nasty, but it, it's like almost like you don't even have to clean yourself. It's crazy. I did this and I was like, oh my gosh. You know, when you go to wipe, it's like it's like nothing there. It's weird. I went, I think I was getting like 60 grams of fiber a day. It was crazy. It was a crazy amount. But I was, you know, I wanted to test it. Obviously, it's not, it's natural. So you can just get off of it and have no negative side effects. But yeah, high fiber diet is not great for your health. You're going to feel more bloated also. Just, you know, stick to the, I think it's 30 grams for men, 20 grams for women a day. That's plenty. One of these and somehow you shit out 10. Like in this one bar, 200 calories, there's 14 grams of fiber. Like is fiber mean protein in Italian, Kofi? Because how could that be the main ingredient? I'm not too sure, man. Like what the hell are these? Like reading the back of the nutrition label looks like it would be my scores at a dunk contest. Zeros across the board. You know it's bad when it feels and smells like the plastic wrap. Like when the actual food is the exact same thing. You gotta be kind of at question here, but on the bright side, it's only 50 calories a slice and three grams of protein ingredients you see that's his point right there like people are focusing so much on like the macros which is good but not the quality that's straight garbage i think i saw a lady burning it once and it caught on fire how is cheese catching on fire maple syrup uh ingredients what the f Instead of Yeezys or Supreme, the fitness hype beast is always on the lookout for the newest monster flavor drop. In 2022, the kill count is still the number that matters most. Energy drinks are stupid. Go to sleep. So people just lose the ability to just have some common sense. Just go to sleep. You don't need all those energy drinks. I remember, oh my gosh, this is probably like eight years ago. I drank a five hour energy thinking like, oh, it's gonna give me energy. That thing tastes like poison. It's disgusting. And like the caffeinate, the caffeination in these drinks is just, I don't know, man. I hate it. But instead it's referring to the amount of energy drinks that you slam and not sorority pledges. I still can't get over how weird my armpits feel in the shirt right now, but those are the only trends that I can think of. If I'm missing anything, let me know in the comments down below. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more crazy ones to come for a part two. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to drop it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so those are the fitness trends, guys. I agree with a, with, uh, a lot of them. A lot of them just need to stop or um, be discontinued if, if I had to word it that way. Just go to sleep. Drink water primarily. Um, make sure that you're exercising as hard as you can, as safely as you can, for as long as you can. Meaning like 
no more than an hour, obviously, or hour and a half max. If you're training longer than an hour and a half, you're not training hard. There's no way. There's no way you can put that much pressure on your body for an hour and a half. For example, I, my warm up is like 20 minutes right there. So then when I do my actual workout, it's, you know, around 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the day. I also do 15 minutes a, of uh, boxing. So, you know, basically it's like 15 minutes of boxing, 15 minutes of, uh, you know, warm up. Uh, and then I get then, then an hour of actual exercise. It's not even that whole hour because I have to rest. It's just I'm there for an hour. That's what I allocate time in my schedule for. I have an appointment with myself at 8.30 in the morning, five days a week. And I'm done generally around 10, a little earlier than 10 back home. Literally, literally two minute drive to the gym. And that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, like it, comment down below, subscribe. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.